Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. So guys, as you all know that Accenture hiring is ongoing for 2025 and 2026 batch students. In this particular video, I will be discussing the latest coding questions which were asked in the Accenture hiring. Okay, so total two coding questions with their solutions I will be discussing in this video in detail. So make sure to watch this video till the end because each and every question will be important for you and same might come in your exam as well. Okay, and guys, we have a dedicated playlist for Accenture preparation, wherein each and every section that will be coming in your Accenture exam, we have videos for that. Okay, after watching this video, do check out this playlist. I will give you the link of this playlist in the i button or in the description box. Make sure to visit it. If you have any doubts regarding the hiring or any other question, you can always write in the comment section or you can join this Telegram group. It's dedicated for 2025 and 2026 batch students. So guys, now let's start this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for motivating us for keep making such videos. So now let's start this video. Okay, so guys, before moving ahead, please write in the comment section that what is the status of Accenture hiring is in your college, whether you have now, when is your exam, when is your interview, when is your communication assessment, anything, any status you can write in the comment section. Now let's just start the video and I will be discussing the question, then the approach and then finally the coding part. Okay. So first is you are provided with a string which has a sequence of ones and zeros. This sequence is the encoded version of an English word. You are supposed to write a program to decode the provided string and find the original word. Each alphabet is representing by a sequence of ones. So for example, you have a long string which contains ones and zeros. Okay, if you have A, so that will be represented by a single one. If you have B, that will be represent, represented by two ones. If you have C, then it will be represented by three ones. If you have D, you, it will be represented by four ones and so on. If you have Z, then it will be represented by 26 ones. Okay, now the sequence of ones in the encoded form are separated by a single zero, which will help to distinguish between two letters. Okay. So by, by the input string, we have to form the word. Okay, every alphabet is represented by a sing once and how two alphabets will be distinguished, they will be distinguished by zero. Let's just quickly see with the help of the example here. There is one note that is given, input string will always be in the uppercase. Okay, so this is the input string that is given to us. Okay, so see, <coughs> these zero represents the distinguishing between two characters. It means that this is one character, this is one character and this is one character. So if we have single one, that then this single character means A. If we have two ones, then it means B. If we have three ones, then it means C. And they are all distinguished by this zero. That is okay. Now the new alphabet will start. Next example is we have triple one, that is C. Then zero, it means the new alphabet will start. Then there are four fours. Okay, sorry, there are four ones, it means D, then again zero distinguishing between these characters, then there are five ones, that means E, so our output will be C, D, E. Okay, I hope the question is clear to you, these all ones represent the characters, if there is two ones, it means B, if there are five ones, it means E, okay, and so on, and every alphabet is distinguished by zero, okay. Okay, so guys, before moving ahead, I would like you to know that on our top mid page of Code Bashers, we have Accenture exam preparation material. In this particular material, all the sections that will be coming in your exam are covered with their previously asked questions. Whether it is the SQL coding questions, whether it is the DSA based questions, whether it is the game based questions, or whether it is the MCQs or pseudo codes that will be coming in your exam. We even have Accenture actual exam MCQs. If I will show the uh, sample of, let's suppose, the SQL PDF, we have the proper question, we have the schema and the correct query for it. Similarly, 30 SQL questions of similar type are there in this material. Similarly, if you want to practice coding, we have 50 plus actually asked Accenture coding questions. Proper question, sample input, sample output, explanation and the code is given to you. Similarly, we have the actual questions like around 40 to 50 MCQs which have actually been asked in Accenture this year. Okay, with their correct options and their correct answer. So, there is a high chance that some questions might repeat from this material only or the similar kind of questions can be asked from you in the SQL or coding part or the MCQs. So the best way to prepare for any exam is by solving the previously asked questions. So if you are interested, the links are in the I button, in the pinned comment as well as in the description box. So now let's continue with the video. Now <coughs> let's just see towards the, move towards the approach of this particular question. 
so what we will do it is very simple we will make a count variable okay this is our input string this is our input string and we want to form the answer so we will take one answer variable initially it will be empty we will take a count variable okay start with starting with here now okay we will do do here okay now the count will become one count will store the number of ones till now so it will become one now then we'll move to this number then this count again it's a one so count will become two then we'll move to this number again a count is one so it count will increase to three now we are moving to zero moving to zero it means that a current alphabet is completed now what is the current alphabet till now the count was three till now the count was three so we will now convert this count into the alphabet we know that one one was there for a two ones for b three ones for c but how we will convert three to c we will use the sky value so sky value of a is 65 sky value of a is 65 it means that sky value of c will be sky value of c will be what it will be it will be 67 so what we'll do we will add this 3 into 64 so 64 will be a constant value 64 plus 3 will give us 67 oh sorry 64 plus 3 will give us 67 that is the sky value of c okay that is the sky value of c only so in this answer what we'll do once we encounter 0 we will first convert this count variable into the sky value and we will add that into this answer value and now since we have encountered 0 so we will again update this count value to 0 only okay now again the same approach will be starting again we will move to this one count will be updated we will move to this one count will be incremented we will move to this one count will be incremented we will move to this one the count will be incremented total four ones are there so again to convert this four into the sky value what it will be we will simply do 64 plus 4 okay that is 68 68 is the sky value of d so simply we will add this d okay now again count will be updated to 0 only now again these five ones we will be counting so count will become 5 so 5 64 plus 5 we will do 64 plus 5 ones will do we will, it will become 69 69 is the sky value of e so we will simply add this e to this answer and this is the in the end the answer that we are returning I hope now the approach is clear to you. If you are finding this video helpful or useful till here and do hit that like and subscribe button for motivating us. Now let's just quickly move towards the coding part of this question then the things will become more clear to you. So guys I have already told you that in Accenture you only have to write the function. You have to implement the function not the entire code. So in this particular function we will be getting a decoded string that we have to decode. Sorry encoded string we will be getting that we have to decode. So if the s dot length is double equal to zero, we are simply returning the empty string because if length is zero, then there is no string. Okay. Now we are defining a variable called int count equal to zero that will store the number of ones. Then we have string answer that will contain our final answer. We will be iterating over the we will be iterating over the entire loop one by one for every character we will be iterating. So if our current character is one, we will do nothing but simply we will do count plus plus. Else else means that if our current character is 0 if our current character is 0 then we know that okay now a new alphabet will start so first of all current alphabet needs to be converted into a sky value and add it to our answer variable so inside else what we'll do we will again check if the count variable is greater than 0 because it is quite possible that between between two zeros there is no alphabet there is no one so therefore we are checking first if count is greater than 0 if count is not greater than 0 if count is yes greater than 0 then first of all we will be converting the current uh, count to the sky value how will we be converting i have told you we will simply do 64 plus count okay it will give us that sky value and we will typecast that sky value into the character that will give us the corresponding character for that sky value and we will simply add that into the answer variable and we will again update the count to zero okay once the loop is over okay i hope this thing is clear to you once the loop is over then again we will do the similar thing that is answer plus equivalent to 64 plus count okay and again we'll typecast to care and we'll add it into the answer variable now why after the for loop we are doing it because see this is the main thing here see this particular last last alphabet for last alphabet once all the one have been counted then the loop will be over there will be no zero at the end of the string since there will be no zero at the end of the string therefore an extra extra if condition 
we need to find out okay if count is zero again the last character we need to type cast it to uh, the <coughs> character and add it to the answer variable and we'll simply return answer from here let me just quickly run it so this is the input one zero double one zero triple zero one so abc should be the output for it we will again okay yeah you can see here that the answer is abc now let's just try for cd also uh, anyway anything you can try okay zero and one so this should give us it's i think it's seven one seven is f and f fb it should give us yeah fb is it is giving so this particular code will pass all the test cases that will be given to you now let's just quickly move towards the second code so second question is a googly prime number is defined as a number that is derived from the sum of its individual digits for example if n is 43 the sum of its individual digit is 4 plus 3 that is 7 and 7 is a prime number so therefore the, uh, the, which is a prime making it a googly prime number okay so what you have given it's a very easy question you will be given a number n you will first have to calculate the sum of the digits of that number if the sum of those digits of that number is a prime number then you have to print yes if it is not a prime number you will simply have to print no for example let's just see the input and output so 43 4 plus 3 will give us 7 so 7 is a prime number so therefore we are printing out yes next is 1 2 3 5 1 2 3 5 will give us 11 adding these numbers will give us 11 11 is a prime number therefore we are printing yes let's see 1 2 3 so 1 2 3 will give us 6 6 is not a prime number so it will give us no as an output this is a very simple question so it's uh, just for approach will be simple just calculate the sum of all the digits then check that whether that sum is a prime number or not okay and guys i would again like you to remind that on our top mid page of code bashers we have essential exam preparation material for 2026 batch all the sections that are coming in your exams are covered here with the previously asked actual questions whether sql coding questions uh, normal coding questions game based questions uh, actual exam mcqs okay mc pseudo codes from different different sections all the questions that have been previous, previously asked in Accenture are covered in this particular material. If you are interested, the links are in the description box. Do check it out. So now let's continue with the video. Now we will be again. I am telling you, we only have to implement the function, nothing else. Okay. So input n will be given to us. We will first check if n is double equivalent to zero. If it is zero, then return no. Okay. If it is zero, return no. Now again, let's just check. <coughs> and uh, 1 0 or okay or n double equivalent to 1 so 1 is also not prime so in that case return no now we have a sum variable okay we have a sum variable that is initialized with 0 so while our n is greater than equivalent to 0 we will check for every digit we will add every digit we will find the every digit by doing mod okay we will add every digit into the sum variable and we will do n is equivalent to n divided by 10 so that we can move towards the next digit so this is after the while loop is over all the digit sum we will have inside this sum variable now our task is simple we have to check whether that the sum that we have received is it a prime number or not so for that we have this second loop we have a variable declared that bool is prime okay so by default we are taking it true okay now we have to check whether the current number is prime or not so if you are following all the videos that i have been posting on this channel regarding accenture then you must know that i have already told you that how to find out the prime number of a number or how to check whether the current number is prime or not in a <coughs> in a very small uh, time complexity so what we'll do to check that the current number is prime or not we will run a loop from i equivalent to 2 i less than equivalent to square root of that number i plus plus y square root of that number i have already told in the previous videos okay now for every number we will now check in between this range for every number we will check whether the sum is divisible by i or not is divisible by i or not if sum is divis divisible by i it means that it is not a prime number so what we'll do if in inside this range if the sum is divisible by any of the number we will do is prime equivalent to false and we will break from here okay we will break from here that this number is not a prime number now in the end what we have to return we have to return a string whether yes or no now we will check whether the current number was prime or not if it is a prime then we'll, we are returning yes if it is not a prime then we are returning no from here let us see with the help of input one two three we are running let us run it so it should give us no that it is not a prime number okay let us see okay it is giving us no 
Now let's just run 1, 2, 3, 5. It will give us 11. 11 is a prime number. So let's just see it will give us uh, yes or no. So it is giving us yes that it is a prime number. Now let's just pass 1 only. Okay. For 1 it should give us no. Because 1 is neither prime nor composite we all know. So yeah. For 2 let's just see for 2 what it returns. So for 2 let's just see it should return yes. That 2 is a prime number. So yeah it is returning yes. So I hope this particular code is clear to you. It will pass all the test cases that will be given to you. If you have any doubts regarding anything you can write in the comment section.